Good evening, D. God bless you. Thank you for joining tonight. Thank you for joining tonight. God bless you, sir, and pray some others come on as well tonight. But we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with a word of prayer. Uh, I believe that God, <clears throat> excuse me, God is going to speak to us tonight by his word to empower us, strengthen us, and encourage us to stand in the faith of Jesus Christ. No matter what we encounter and go through in this life, God is still in control. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Good evening, Webster. God bless you. Thank you for joining tonight. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, I thank you for your presence, God, right now. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. I thank you, Lord God, for the atoning sacrifice that was made on the cross for our redemption, Lord God, through your Son, Jesus Christ who became the propitiation for our sins and not our sins only but the sin of the whole world and lord i ask you to forgive us for our sins tonight oh god and wash us in the blood of the lamb purify our thoughts and our actions cleanse our minds from the busyness of the day that we have a clear conscious focus on you oh god to hear your word tonight oh god to speak into our hearts to bring transformation in our mind, our body, our soul, our will, our emotions, that everything about us, God, will be transformed by the word of God. I ask that you, Lord God, strengthen the weak, empower those, Father, who need your strength, of oh God, to keep standing in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what they go through in this life, oh God, knowing that you are working in their lives to will and do according to your good pleasure. Father, we trust in your ability to keep us from falling, present us faultless for your majesty and the glory and your presence, oh God that you, Father God, would present us before your presence with exceeding joy. And we ask that you be glorified in everything we do and everything we say, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Heal the sick, bind up the broken hearts, and heal their wounds tonight, O oh God. We pray for those who are incarcerated, those who are homeless, Father God, those who, Father, are, are, are bedridden, those, Father God, in the convalescent homes, those in the hospitals tonight, that your anointing will flow right where they are, Father God, to meet their every need. Father God, and to heal and to raise them off their sick beds and provide for the homeless, oh God, tonight. We ask that you be glorified, oh God. And we thank you for your provisions are sure, Father. We can have faith, the size of a mustard seed. We can believe, God, that you can provide because you are Jehovah Jireh. We trust in your ability, Father God, to provide every need of every person, oh God, even those who come on tonight, Father God. Let you touch them in a special way, Lord God. Let your anointing flow right where they are. A fresh outpouring of your spirit to, Father, empower them, strengthen and encourage them to keep standing in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing with confidence what we ask in your name, God, that you would do by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lashonda. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Terry. God bless you, Victor. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to go into uh, chapter 18 in the Battlefield of the Mind, the, uh, the book. On page 199, if you have the book, page 199 is where I'm going to pick up at. Last week we was talking about responsibilities and, and taking, uh, 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 be aware of your actions and what you allow yourself to distract yourself from walking in God's wisdom and God's truth. And follow uh, after the ant, how the ant who is a little bitty animal or creature that God created that has no rule, no guide, but yet knows how to gather in the summer to store up for the winter to prepare for the winter season. And many times we have a winter season in our lives and we're not prepared on how to deal with it because of the sin issues we allow to enter to our hearts. And God wants to know tonight that, hey, the wilderness mentality is a place that will keep you bound and keep you afflicted and keep you in, in a place of a stronghold, a spiritual prison. But tonight you can be set free by the wisdom and the power of the knowledge of God's word by the Holy Spirit as you allow the anointing to flow into your hearts tonight. 
I guarantee you that something will be said that will encourage you. Something will, will be spoken that will speak directly to your heart, right? Where you are, your condition of your mind, where you are in the wilderness. And the Holy Spirit will set you free if you allow him to come in to do that. So be responsible for the words that come out of your mouth. A lot of times we speak death over our own selves and not even aware of it. Or we allow other people to speak death over us. But God wants us to know tonight that you have the power. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. You have the power at your its disposal to you that you're disposal to use for the glory of God to cast down the enemy's imaginations, his wicked thoughts, his strongholds, his influences, his enticements. You have the power to overcome anything that the enemy brings your way to reject it or receive it. As we've been talking about the children of Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 1, verse 2, it says, there, there are 11 days' journey from Horeb by the, by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. And, and that's how long it took. For, you know, that, that it should have taken the children of Israel to get to their promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. But because of the wilderness mentality, they were stuck. They were stuck in a condition of their minds that prevented them from entering to the place that God has for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, a prosperous place, a place of satisfaction, a place where God will provide for them continually. But because of the mindset, they did not enter in. Matter of fact, many of them died off in a new generation were the ones that came up under them that inherited the promised land that God has spoken to Moses to take the children to. Even when God commanded Joshua to lead the people to the promised land. Many of those people, because of the wilderness mentality, they couldn't see themselves free. They couldn't see themselves walking in the promises God has for them. So they had a mentality to want to go back to slavery, to the place of the Egyptian where they were in captivity. And a lot of times we do the same thing. We revert backwards to our captivity in our minds. Knowing that God has set us free, but yet so many times we revert back to the things that God delivered us from. We go pick it up as a dog returned to its vomit, and we go back and devour the thing that we spit up, the, the thing that God had discarded from our lives. We go gravitate right back to those very same things that put you in a place of bondage, in a place of captivity. And when God is trying to speak to you, you shut it, shut your ears. In other, in other words, you clog your ears up from hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you that, hey, you can be free. You don't have to live that way. God broke you out. He who had a son is set free is free indeed. So we, we put stoppers in our ears or earplugs when we, we don't allow the word of the Lord to get into our hearts because we don't clog our ears from hearing. And that's dull of hearing. And God called that type of people stiff necked rebellious, stubborn. And one thing about God, when God speaks a word, he's able to perform that word in your life. But you have to be willing to let him perform his word in your life to bring you to a place of prosperity in your freedom in Christ Jesus. So tonight in chapter 18, we, we are going to talk about the wilderness mentality number three. The wilderness mentality number three. Please make everything easy. I can't take it if things are too hard. How many times how we found ourselves in a predicament where God has brought us out of something, even trying to make your life much better, but because of the mindset, you can't see yourself getting free, so you revert backwards to the place of captivity, and God is saying, move forward. I want you to move forward. Don't worry about the details. Don't worry about the, the people that are hating on you. Don't worry about how folks are talking about you, how folks are saying you don't deserve the promotion on your job, how folks say you don't deserve that pastoral position. I can do it better than you. Just like the, the Levites, the, the people of Korah. There were some people in the Bible called Korah who led rebellion against God, uh, against God's servants, Moses and Aaron. And they spoke evil of them. And, and because of that, God allowed them to be killed, and the ground opened up and swallowed them up, and God burned fire down from heaven and consumed the rest of them. So it's a shame when God has to allow judgment to come upon you because of rebellion. Because you get into a place of fear, doubt, and unbelief, you can't see yourself being successful in the kingdom of God. One thing about God's word, when he told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, 
He says to meditate on the word of God and observe to do all that's written in it. Don't let the word depart from your heart, nor from your mouth, but keep it in your heart. Speak the word of yourself. Meditate on that word. He said, then you make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. Good success comes from the obedience, from meditating on God's word, keeping the word of God in your heart and in your mind. That's why it's so important to think on the word of God daily. Put the word before you when you get up in the morning. Put the word on your television. Put it on your radio. Because the more you feed your spirit with the word of God, the less you're, you're going to be vulnerable to give into the, to, to the tactics or the enticements of the enemy. It's very important to really allow the word of God to get into your heart. Don't have a passive mindset. Don't I have to, don't be, be stuck with a judgmental, critical, and suspicious mind. Don't allow yourself to get to the place where your future is determined by my past and my present, because that's not what God says about you. Your future, God says, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you, says the Lord to prosper you and do you no harm and give you an expected end. That's the promise, God, for your future. Jeremiah 29, 11. God has a future for us, but in order for us to see it, we got to get into the word of God and allow the word of God to speak to us by the Holy Spirit to convey to us the mysteries of the gospel and give us a revelation where we can see what God sees and says about us. The only way we'll see what God has for us when we open up our ear gates to hear the word of God to speak the word of God, begin to live by the word of God, meditate on the word of God. When your body begins to exist by the word of God, then you have a clear conscience to receive a revelation from God to speak into your life. So tonight we're going to talk about, please make everything easy. I can't take it if it's too hard. So many times when things become a, a challenge for us, we want the easy way out. The children of Israel, they want the easy way to get to the promised land. God could have very well took them through this 11-day journey to the promised land, but he knew if they had came across the Philistines, they were reverted back to captivity. So God allowed them to go around the Philistines, to go around 40 years in the wilderness. And it shouldn't have been 40 years, but because their minds couldn't see themselves going forward, they went around the same old cycle, the same condition in their mindsets over and over and over. We do the same thing. We allow the enemy to entice us, to afflict us, to stricken us, even strip us of our power and our authority. And he leads us in the place of captivity in our minds. And we go around that thing year after year after year after year and be stuck with the same condition. But tonight, God wants to set us free. He wants us all to know that you are going to have some obstacles. You're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some problems. You're going to have some difficult moments. Everything is not going to be on easy street for you to make it to the promised land. God has a promise which is for us to make it to eternity to be with Jesus forever. But in order to get there, there's going to be some requirements that God has spoken to his people. And one thing I was looking at in Deuteronomy chapter 30, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. It says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In verse 16, it says, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou may live and multiply. Your success only comes from Following and being obedient to what? The commands of God. <clears throat> he said, and this, he said, in that I command thee this day. What day? The day God brought you out of out of your wilderness, brought you out of captivity, brought you into the wilderness, what I mean, from captivity to the wilderness, he gave you an instruction. Be obedient. In order to get to the promised land, you gotta be obedient. Knowing that. You got to love the Lord that God walk in his ways. Many times as a believer, you're going to stumble. Many times you're going to make mistakes. 
But one thing about God, when you love God with your heart, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your entire being is, is filled with the love of God, even when you make a mistake, guess what? Grace is sufficient. God's grace covers you. God's grace provides you the opportunity to have repentance. But the problem comes in, we make a mistake, we keep making the same mistake, we keep making the same mistake, the same mistake, <clears throat> over and over, and we find ourselves becoming less influenced by the Holy Spirit to repent. Because now you get into the place of a conditional mindset of, of, of carnality. And that carnality is a mind of the flesh that is what? An enemy of God. So we have to pay attention. How am I walking in God's way? Jesus declared that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. So if Jesus made the way for us, guess what you have to do as a believer? Just believe it. Trust in his ability to cause you and keep you walking in what? The divine way. And he says, and to keep his commandments. Every command that God has spoken in his word, you're responsible. When you hear the word of God, you read the word of God, you pray the word of God, you're responsible for the word of God, to maintain the word of God in your heart. And when you don't obey God's word, guess what you're doing? You're disobeying and following the direction of the enemy who's keeping you in a pathway of a wilderness mentality. The wilderness mentality is a place of a wilderness where there's nothing existing but darkness. <clears throat> because when we get stuck in the mind, in the wilderness, we're reverting from the light of truth, and we're walking back in a place of darkness. Paul made it clear on one occasion, he said, you once were darkness, but now the light has come and shined in your hearts. Now walk in it. So we have to recognize that we have to walk in the light of truth as a daily process, as a daily progression. Every day being sanctified, being filled with the Holy Spirit, we have to continually keep on progressing in the word of God's truth abiding by his commands and holding fast to the statutes of God's truth and keeping his judgments. Then he said that thou mayest live and multiply. God promised the children of Israel, not just multiplication of the flesh, but the multiplication of the promised land. God says, as you walk in obedience, when you make it to the promised land, it's going to continue to be an everlasting flow. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't know what's going on my throat tonight. I rebuke them in Jesus' name. The Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. God promises that the land flowing with milk and honey was going to be a continual progression of prosperity. Everything they needed will be in this place that God has set and placed his name on for them to dwell in. But then he goes on and says, verse 17, But if thine heart turn away, so that thou would not hear, we got to guard our ear gates. Every day we got to guard our ear gates from the voice of the enemy trying to talk you out of your purpose, talk you out of the promises of God for your life, talk you out of the plan and the will God has for you. You got to put a guard on your ear gates to where you will not hear any other voice but the voice of the Lord. He said, but if you will not hear, but, sh but shall be drawn away, drawn away, enticed by the enemy, lured by the bait of the enemy, away from the destiny that God set before you to revert backwards to the place of exile. He said, if you are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Verse 18, I, he said, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish. God gave stern, strict instructions for the children of Israel in order to make it to the promised land. 
And all they had to do was be obedient. Something that simple. Just obey. Trust and obey. There's no other way. Following Jesus every day. When you walk in obedience and you trust and obey, Jesus leads you down the pathway. So even when obstacles does get in the way, distractions come your way, guess what he does? He put blinders on your eyes to not see those things, but to tread forward by the promises of the word of the Holy Spirit to keep trampling the enemy under your feet. So no matter what distractions come, it's not going to deter you from your destiny. But then he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. So check this out. This is a good revelation. When God says, I call heaven and earth to record this day, he's talking about, because I gave you instruction, I gave you the command on what to do and what not to do. Don't worship other gods or serve them or follow after them. He said, he said here's what happened. I'm going to have heaven record that these words I spoke to you, they're written in the book, they're book, written in the book of heaven. He said, I set before you life. So he's telling you that this is recorded in heaven. And what I have given you the instruction to do, I set before you. Not only have I said it before you, blessing and cursing, he said, therefore choose life to die, and that seed may live. So everyone connected to you is what God is talking about will inherit the promise because I set before you life and death. So when you choose, check this out, you choose to walk in death, that's defiance of God's word, rebellion to God's word. You choose death, you choose to walk in a, in a curse and, and, and separate yourself from the promises God has for you. And guess what happens? Your generation and your bloodline will be cursed by the same curse. But when you choose life, God said the life I set before you, he said that you and your seed may live. So in other words, God says when you obey my word, I cut the curse off your bloodline. I cut the curse off of your generation. So everything that you do from this day forward that's in obedience and according to my word that I've written in, in your heart and I've given to you to obey and, and, I, and I follow after, he said, everything I've spoken to you is going to affect down the road your generation, the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation, because I gave you a command, and I gave you the order on how to live and abide in my command. But the problem comes in, we listen to the voice of the enemy, so we don't listen to the voice of God. So when God is giving you instructions, we're telling God, God is too hard. I can't do it. I, I tried, Father, walking in your way, tried being obedient, but down the road, I got stuck. I slipped off, went back to the same old sin, the same iniquity, perverting my ways again, and it's hard for me to come back. God says, I know your heart. He knows when you're real. He knows when you're fake. And we have to be real with ourselves because we can't fool God. So in Deuteronomy 30, verse 11, chapter 30, verse 11, for this commandment which I give you, this day is not too difficult for you, nor is it far off. So God says, the commandments that I've given you is not difficult to obey. It's not difficult to walk in my ways. It only becomes hard when you become a transgressor of the commands and the laws of God. When you transgress, that means going against, fighting against God's word. When you go against God's word, then it becomes hard. This wrong mindset is sim similar to the one we have just discussed, but enough of a problem among God's people that I believe it is worthy of, of a chapter in this book. So, it is one of the most commonly expressed excuses I hear from people who request prayer. So often someone will come to me for advice and prayer. And when I tell them what the word of God says, or what I think the Holy Spirit is saying, their response is, I know that's right. 
God has been showing me the same thing. But Joyce is just too hard. God has shown me that the enemy tries to inject this phrase into people's minds to get them to give up. Isn't that something? How when God speaks a prophetic word in your life and you know it's the truth from God's heart, you, you, you bear witness in your spirit is from God, but that flesh, that flesh gets in the way and says, it's too hard. I can't do it. Lord, I, I know if I try it, God, I'm not going to make it not even another day. You know why? Because that's when doubt settles in your heart. That's when fear gets in your heart. That's when resistance gets in your heart. And you find yourself opposing God's word. When God says to abide by his words and his commands that he would lead you in the way, guess what God does? He takes you by your hand, your spiritual hand. He guides you down the pathway of truth and righteousness to bring you into the place he has for you to be successful. A few years ago, when God revealed this truth to me, he instructed me to stop saying how hard everything was, assure me that if I did, things would get easier. And that is so true. The more you confess, I taught this years ago and still teach it to this very day about confession. The more I confess with my mouth, I'm sick. I confess I have a migraine headache. I confess I'm getting a cold. I confess I got COVID. I confess my body's hurting. I confess my neck is hurting. The more I dwell on those thoughts and my mind agrees with those thoughts, guess what happens? Your heart is in agreement. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And because of the heart is in agreement with the mind and the mouth and the spirit all in accordance to say those things that it, uh, I'm going to get sick, guess what happens? You get sick. Not only do you get sick, but I feel I'm getting worse. So you get worse. Not saying you may not have a condition, you may not have an illness, but the more you give power to that illness, the longer it maintains itself attached to your body. Not only attached to your body, but your mindset. Because it starts with the mind, a thought. The more I dwell on those thoughts that's contrary to, word, to the word of God, the more it manifests. I give it power to keep me in a place of captivity of affliction. My Bible tells me that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. God has the ability, he has the power to set you free when you change your confession. You change your confession and, and tell God, God, I'm afflicted in my body, but I thank you, God, that you provided healing through the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, even though I got this pain in my neck and pain in my back, my joints are hurting, I got arthritis affected me, God, I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm still healed. Guess what happens? Your mind begins to change because your confession changed. Your confession changed, now your body begins to change. Because once we had attached itself to my mind and was controlling my mind in the wilderness, I'm coming out of that thing gradually by the power of the Holy Spirit, and now I can see myself being set free. If I can see myself being set free, if I can think myself well, my body gets well. And that is a true statement. So we got to be careful how the enemy comes along and speaks into your spirit. He will speak to you everything that will cause you to doubt God's word and God's ability. Even when we are determined to press through and do something, we spend so much time thinking and talking about how hard it is that the project ends up being much more difficult than it would have been if I had been positive instead of being negative. That is so awesome. It's so powerful because the opposite of this thing, if I spend my time dwelling on how easy it is when I trust God's ability, trusting God's word, stand and trust him to carry me through the project that I need to do in my life, guess what happens? It gets easier and easier and easier, and things begin to come together in my life, just like starting a business. 
God tells you to start a business. And you tell yourself, I know God told me to start a business, but I don't, I don't have enough wisdom. I don't have enough knowledge. Oh, it ain't going to work. I, I, I'm not going to be successful in this thing. So you tell yourself, it's not going to work. I'm not going to be successful. Nobody's going to help me. I got to do this all by myself. I'm just not going to do it. Guess what happens? The business God spoke prophetically to your life would never get off the ground because you doubted God and your seed fell to the ground and the birds came and ate it up. But when the Spirit of God speaks unto your spirit and you tell God, God, you told me to start this business, I'm going to trust you, God, for the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding on how to do this thing, God. I'm going to trust you're going to send forth the resources connect with the right relationships of the people, God, who have the power to help me get this business off the ground, then it will be successful. And you confess that thing and write your vision and make it plain that all who may see it may run with it. Guess what God does? God blesses it. He blesses your vision. Then he begins to connect you to everything that's attached to that vision <coughs> to bring it into fruition in your life. I remember years ago when I heard God tell me to start a church. And I was like, God, I don't know anything about starting no church. <clears throat> I don't think I can do this. But the vision came to me when God showed me that I was in a building and I had my own church. And God spoke to me several times concerning it. And the more it stayed in my spirit, one day I woke up. I said, God, what do I need to do? Start this church. God said, do some research. Find out about how to get the name, get the name for the church, how to get it registered with the state, all the things that was requirements to get this church off the ground. God taught me how by the spirit. Because I was willing to be obedient and to learn from the spirit of God and reach out to different people that already had churches to see what God would have me to gravitate from them to get the church off the ground. And I did just what God said. And the church did get off the ground. Matter of fact, it lasted a year until I stopped being serious about the thing and it began to die. Hear what I said? When I stopped being committed to my own vision, it began to die. So it ended up eradicating. And the thing that I learned from that, when God tells you to do something, don't allow the enemy to speak into your ear to doubt God's ability to make it happen and keep it going. Because that's what happened. When the enemy starts causing the membership to decline, I said, you know, what's the use of having this church? I'm going to just let it go. And this enemy is like, yeah, just go and let it go. Ain't nobody coming anyway. But God told me to do that. If I had obeyed God, that church probably would still be going on to this very day. But i tell you one thing about it. I'm going to tell you the same thing. Don't allow yourself to get stuck in the wilderness of regret. Don't get stuck in the wilderness of regret when you make a mistake and you fall short of God's glory. For all have fallen short of God's glory. That's what the word tells us. We all messed up. We all made mistakes. But thank God for Jesus, who is the propitiation for our sins, and not us only, but the sin of the whole world, who stood in the gap for my past, my present and my future mistakes and provided the redemption that I needed to be successful in the ministry to this very day. You can make it. I know you can. I believe you will as you set your eyes on things that are above and not on things of the earth. When I initially began to see from the word of God how I was supposed to live and behave and compared to where I was, I was always saying I want to do things your way, God. But it's so hard. The Lord led me to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, in which he says in his commandments that uh, he said his commandments are not too difficult nor too far away. So if God says it's not too far away, that means it's right at your grasp. God's commandments is right there at your reach. But all you got to do is reach up and grab it. Have faith that you can gravitate to God's commandments be obedient to his commandments, live by his commandments, and abide in his commandments. The reason the Lord's commandments 
are too difficult for us is because he gives us the reason that our Lord's commands are not too difficult for us is because he gives us the Holy Spirit to work in us powerfully and to help us in all he has asked us to do. So we got the Holy Spirit rooting you on, saying you can make it. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep standing on the promises. Keep holding fast to God's word. Trust in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in size of mustard seed. God's going to bring the thing to pass your life. So every precious promise that God has for you is yes and amen, and you can have it by faith. The helper. The helper. We have a helper. How many believe we got a helper? Amen. We got a helper tonight. We got the Holy Spirit working in our lives to help us be, be successful in the thing that God has for us to do. All we got to do is just accept God's promises and his word, hold fast to his word, and believe his word. In St. John chapter 14, verse 16, it says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. That's in the Amplified Version, St. John chapter 14, 16. That's in the Amplified Version. And in the uh, King James, it says it like this, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So the same thing, different, different uh, format, it's the same message. God gave us a helper. The helper abides with us forever as our helper. Not only that, our comforter, our guide, our director, our counselor, our advocate. He stands by you, and he's there with you, all the way through your journey to get you to the end of that thing when you trust God's ability to carry you. The problem comes in when we get in the mindset that God, you brought me this far by faith, but God, it's so hard to go to the next phase of life. I done lost so loved ones along the journey. I done lost my job along the journey. I done lost my car. My finances depreciated. My family falling apart. Everything that I needed that I relied on God has now seemed to be stripped away from me. But God says, and I will ask the Father, this is Jesus speaking, that he would give you another comforter. So even in the midst of the disappointments, the distractions, the hurts, and the pains, the things that happen to affect our lives, we still have the Comforter. We still have the comforter. We still have the helper. We still have the intercessor who's there for you. Rooting you on, say you can make it. Just hold on. It's maybe dark right now, but the light's still going to shine. So we got to set our sight on the thing that God promised us and not on the things that are happening right now in my life. Sure enough, things are difficult. Sure enough, things are falling apart. But when I change my focus, we talked about this last week, having focused 2020, that insight that goes beyond the natural realm of where I'm at right now and see beyond my situation and my conditions and my troubles and my trials and see me coming to the end of those things by faith, walking and striving and achieving the blessings, the favor, the promises that God has for me to attain. And I guarantee Everything God promised you, it will happen in your life. Things get hard when we, when we are trying to do them independently without leaning on and relying on God's grace. You need to write that down. You need to write that down. Things get hard when we are trying to do them independently. That means without God, separated, without leaning on and relying on God's grace. Mercy forgave me. Grace kept me. And God says, you can't do anything without him. For with God, without God, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible to him what? That believeth. So if I believe that God says, there's a brighter day ahead of my darkness, that God says, even though I might be afflicted right now, my healing is still coming. 
I'm still receiving it by faith. It's already done because God calls the thing to be not through the already work. So just because I might be sick right now, I can think myself and speak to myself and tell myself, self, God says, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. And God sent this word to heal me and deliver me from all destruction. Guess what happens? It begins to manifest. And because God says, I can't do nothing without depending on his grace. So Lord, I thank you for your grace to carry me into my healing, into my deliverance, into my promise and the favor and the blessings that you have for my life. And everything God has for you will begin to manifest by faith. That's the key. Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is a something things hoped for and ever the things not seen. I can't see it with these eyes. I can't believe it with the natural mind. But by faith, I believe it with the spiritual mind. Let this mind be you that is also in Christ Jesus. So the mind of Christ, it tells me just because things are not working out right now in my life, God promised me that if I keep my eyes on things that are above and on the earth, I look to the hills which come as my help. And my help comes from the Lord to make up heaven and earth. Guess what happens? Every blessing and promise God has for me will begin to manifest. Because now I'm tapping into the spirit realm. I can see spiritually what I could not see with the natural eyes. The natural eyes will deceive you out of your promise. But the spiritual eyes will give you insight to begin to see that you already inherited. You hear what I said? Already inherited promise. Everything that God spoke in his word for you and for me is already done by faith. All I have to do is believe that my body is going to catch up with the promises that God has for me and begin to manifest in my life. So my business is already successful. My bank account is already in the overflowing. My children are blessed and highly favored of God. My family is unified and we're serving the same God. We're walking in the promise of God's word by faith. Why? Because I speak those things that be not as though they already were. So if I have a child that's a waver from God, no matter what they've done, in and out of jail, always in doing things wrong, I speak to the spirit of that child. I say, in the name of Jesus, you are delivered. You are set free. You are filled with the spirit of God. You're serving God with all your heart your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion, everything about you is connected relationally to God. Because you speak that thing into their lives until it happens. Don't stop speaking what God commands you to speak. Because the more you speak it and believe that God's going to do it, guess what happens? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will open up for you. So everything God has for you, he says it's going to open up for you by faith. All you got to do is keep on trusting and believing God's word. If everything in life were easy, we would not even need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us. If everything in life was easy, we don't need the Holy Spirit. Just plain and simple. You don't need the Holy Spirit if things are easy for you. You can do things your own way. You can make yourself successful. You can call yourself to be prosperous. Everything you touch is blessed. You don't need the Holy Spirit. You can do it yourself. We don't need Jesus. The reason we have Jesus is because he paid the price for our redemption and for our success. He paid the price for our redemption and our success. So therefore, we need the helper every day to keep our minds focused on the word of God and the promise that God set before you. The children of Israel, if they had kept their eyes focused <coughs> excuse me, on getting to the promised land, they would have made it there. But because of doubt set in their heart and rebellion and became stiff-necked, resisting God's commandments, doing everything that God told them not to do, they did. God said what? They died in the wilderness. But when Joshua brought up the new generation, they were obedient, even though they were disobedient on many occasions and got themselves in captivity. 
strayed away from God's plan. Yet God, every time they cried, every time they cried out to God for help, God delivered them. Guess what? He does the same thing for you today. Every time you cry out in your captivity, your wilderness mentality, God still helps you. Every time you have a longing in your heart to be free from a stronghold, free from an addiction, free from a habit, doesn't matter what that thing is, attach itself to your life, you can be free. Because the Holy Spirit is right there inside of you, giving you the power to strip the enemy of his power. Not only strip him of his power, but to close you, to blanket you in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible tells us to pull off the former man and his habits and his deeds and put on Jesus Christ. So every day is a practice when I get up in the morning that I put on Jesus. The Bible refers to him as the helper. He is in us and with us all the time to help us, to enable us to do what we cannot do. And might add to it, to do with ease what we would do, what would be hard without him. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Holy Spirit, he makes things easier when I obey God's commands and do what God tells me to do without hesitation without procrastination. When I have a willingness, an obedient heart, the Holy Spirit says it's easy to do because the way of a transgressor is hard, but the path of the righteous, it says it's smooth. That's what God does for you and I. He makes our pathway, the crooked places straight, the rough places smooth, because he knows exactly what he needs to do in our lives to help us achieve the goal and the plan and the will that God has for our lives. The easy way and the hard way. The easy way and the hard way. There's an easy way and there's a hard way. Which way would you choose today? Are you going to choose the easy way or are you going to choose the hard way? It's up to you. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. And it says this here. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them through the way of the land of the Philistines, although it was, although it was near. For God said, "Lest peradventure my people repent and see that see war, they return to Egypt." So God, He He took them not by the way of the Philistines, but He took them away around the Philistines as I mentioned earlier, because He knew if they had saw war. They would revert it. That's what God does with us sometimes. He does the same thing for us. If you know something is more than you can handle, he'll take you around it. But there are some things God will let happen to you to challenge your faith to grow. Not only challenge your faith to grow, but to grow you up maturely and spiritually. And many times when we don't understand it, fears are in our heart and we run from God. But God said tonight, don't run from the challenge. Face your giants. Face your Philistines. You keep moving forward because the way I'm setting you before you is going to be easier than you expect. It might look difficult. It might look hard. It might look challenging. But do not revert backwards, but keep pressing forward because I got this and I'm the one that brought you out and the one that's taking you through. You can be sure that God, that anywhere, it, it, excuse me, you can be sure that anywhere God leads you, he is able to keep you. You can be sure that anywhere God leads you, he is able to keep you. Ne he never allows more to come on us than we can bear. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And that says, there's no temptation, temptation, there's no temptation that has taken you but such that is common to man. But God is faithful, who will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So in other words, God's not going to put more on you than you can bear. He knows what you can handle. He knows what you can't handle. 
So God knows the struggles. He knows the things that we're facing with our lives that we can handle. And the thing we can't handle, God says, you know what? I got this. I'm going to carry you around this situation. Matter of fact, that person that's trying to attack you, I'm going to take you away where you avoid them. They won't even see you because I'm covering you with my presence. Not only am I covering you with my presence, but I'm leading and directing you. Whatever he orders, he pays for it. We do not have to live in constant struggle if we learn to lean, <clears throat> excuse me, if we learn to lean on him continually for the strength we need. We do not have to live in a constant struggle. It's your choice. Many people choose to struggle. Many people choose poverty. Many people choose lack because they doubt God's ability to provide for them. My Bible tells me that God is Jehovah Jireh. He always provides and he keeps on providing. But if you choose to struggle, your life will continue to be hard. You never find yourself being successful, overcoming anything in your life. But we learn to lean on him continually for his strength. God will carry you through the most difficult and challenging times in your life and bring you out victoriously. The choice is yours. If you know God has asked you to do something, don't back down just because it gets hard. When things get hard, spend more time with him, lean more on him, and receive more grace from him. When things get hard for you, don't give up. Don't quit. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. When things get difficult, challenging, spend more time in consecration. Spend more time in prayer, seeking God's face. Lean on his strength, his ability, and allow God to give you more grace to carry you through those moments in your life. God's grace is the power coming to you at no cost. God's grace is God's power coming to you at no cost to do through you what he, you cannot do for yourself. To do through you what you cannot do for yourself. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. If you allow things to be difficult and challenging in your life and struggle and don't trust God to carry you through it, it's going to continue to be the same way. Beware of thoughts that say, I can't do this. It's just too hard. Beware of those thoughts because those are tactics of the enemy to assassinate you. The thoughts of the enemy to distract you and divert you from receiving truth and abiding in the truth and living by the truth. You have to recognize the voice of the enemy from the voice of God. I'm going to tell you one way to know when God's speaking to you. When God speaks to you, his, he comes with a still small voice. And his voice is always pleasant. His voice is always peaceful. That's when you know God is speaking to you. When God speaks to you and he gives you a command, he gives you a divine order, obey his word, trust him at his word, and allow him to lead you through his word to accomplish the goal he set before you to do. And I guarantee when you do that, you'll find yourself being more successful and be more obedient to the plan and the will and the purpose that God has for your life to accomplish. We're going to continue this on next week. It's coming to the, close to the top of the hour. As I always do, I want to encourage you. Get in the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Don't allow the enemy to put negative thoughts in your mind and cause you to live a defeated life and lead you astray from the truth of God's Word. The more you meditate on God's word and consecrate, spend time with intimacy with God, God begins to engulf you in his presence. He embraces you in his love, and he gives you divine revelation to help lead and direct you in the path and the plan he has chosen for your life to encounter. And I guarantee the path of the righteous will be smooth for you when you walk in obedience to do what God commands you to do. 
So, Lord God, I thank you for this word tonight. I pray that it have not fallen upon deaf ears, but that your word, Father God, will bring conviction to all of our hearts. If we walked away from your truth, we allowed ourselves to struggle because of unbelief, fear, and doubt settled in our hearts, oh God. We kept saying things were too difficult, too challenging to, to accomplish anything, God. Forgive us, God. Come into our heart. Forgive us for our sins, oh God, knowingly and unknowingly. Forgive us for the times we doubted your word. The times we spoke negatively about your word to other people, God, even over ourselves. But allow your word to penetrate the darkness in our hearts and reveal your light to bring a change in our lives from this day forward. And I ask you, Lord God, to come into our hearts and be our Lord and Savior and release the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts, oh God, to fill us with your power to accomplish your will, your plan, and your purpose you have established for our lives. From this day forward, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Again, I thank you for tuning in tonight to hear the word of God. I pray that something has been said that will help you think, even re-examine your heart, and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to your heart, to show you where you've fallen short, and allow you to allow him to change that area in your life to make you successful in the things that God has for you to accomplish in your life. Even when it comes to your business or your goals that you set before yourself, trust God's ability to accomplish some things in your life, and I guarantee he will do just that. So stay encouraged, stay excited about Jesus, and don't allow yourself to doubt God's word anymore from the day forward, but trust and obey God's word and walk by faith and not by sight. Besides, the word tells us the just shall live by faith and not by sight. Until next week, God bless you. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest through the Bible with us henceforth now forevermore. Until we meet again, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to inbox me, and I will answer those questions, respond to your comments. And I guarantee, no matter what goes on in your life, you are successful. You are prosperous. And I speak blessings and favor over your life from the day forward. In Jesus' name. If you feel like someone to seed into the ministry, it's on the uh, invite that I put on there for the class tonight. Just go back to the invitation and you'll find the link. My cash up on there if you want to sow a seed into the ministry. Every seed goes right back into the ministry. Every seed that is sown into this Bible class goes right back into the church. That's what God instructed me, and I do that faithfully. So you stay encouraged and trust God in his word, and I guarantee you will continue to be blessed and highly favored all the days of your life. Shalom, peace be unto you until next week. Have a good night. You're welcome. You're welcome, my sister. God bless you. You're welcome. Amen. 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 I see quite a few people join us tonight. Thank you again for tuning in. God bless you all. Amen. I really appreciate you You're tuning in each week to support the ministry. I'm glad my son came on tonight, King Charles. God bless you, son. Stay encouraged. Know that God is on your side. No matter what challenge you're faced with right now, you are an overcomer because greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. All right, and I'll talk to you all later. God bless you, and have a good night.